I want this video to be a basic guide for anyone out there that's thinking about selling on eBay. I'm gonna go through the most important things that you need to be aware of, the things that you should be doing, the things that you shouldn't be doing. Let's get right into it. What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Sam. And what I do here is break down various different tips and tricks to help you guys make money online. But in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is going through the most important things that you need to know if you're new to selling on eBay. If you haven't signed up yet and you haven't actually started selling anything, I'm gonna go through the most important things that you need to be aware of as a complete beginner. I've been selling on eBay now for around eight or nine years and I've also helped hundreds of different students get started as well. And in this video, I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step method that you need to be aware of if you're a brand new, complete beginner. And as always, I don't wanna waste any more time. I wanna get straight into the content. So if you find any value in it at any point, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification. Let's jump straight into the video. So the first thing that you must do before you do anything else is identify what type of seller you want to be. Over my years of me selling on eBay, I've noticed that there's different types of sellers. For example, there's people that import stuff from China. So that's what I do. I find suppliers in China, find products that are selling well, and then I import those products and sell those products. There's another type of seller that will go to a charity shop or a thrift store. They'll find discounted items, they'll buy them and they'll sell them on eBay. There's also drop shippers where they don't actually hold the products themselves, but they will list products. And then once they make a sell, they will go over to the place where they're drop shipping it from, buy the item, and then that supplier will send the order directly to the customer. So before you even sign up to eBay, have a little think about what type of seller you want to be. Do a little bit more research into all of these different options and figure out which option is best for you. Because depending on what type of eBay seller you want to be, it's going to have an effect on how much you're going to invest into your eBay business. So moving on to the next thing that you need to be aware of is that when you're signing up to eBay, eBay, make sure that you put the correct details and when I say correct details I'm talking about your name your address your date of birth any bank details any information that eBay need to make sure that you're a real person make sure that you put accurate details and the reason for this is because eBay actually verify your details by doing a soft credit check and if you're not aware of what a soft credit check is this is where eBay is going to run your details through the system to see if you're a real person by checking your name your address and your date of birth they're going to make sure all of these different details match each other and the reason why I know this is because I recently signed up for a brand new eBay account because I'm in the process of building up a new eBay store and I realized that eBay actually did a credit check on me to make sure that I was a real person. So it's very important to remember that when you do get to the point of signing up, make sure to put all of your real details. And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because I get a lot of messages on a day-to-day -day basis from people that say that they don't really trust eBay with their personal details because their eBay account may get hacked in the future and scammers will have access to their personal information. But I've never been hacked, so this isn't really something to be worried about. And plus, if you don't give them the information, it just means that you're not gonna have an eBay account, so the decision's up to you. Okay, so once you've signed up, you've got your account verified, everything think is good the two main things that you need to focus on the most before you do anything is that you need to try and get your selling limit increased to the highest amount possible and you also need to get your feedback score increased to the highest amount possible too I mentioned this in a previous video and a lot of people messaged me said that they want more information on it but the reason why increasing your feedback is very important is because this is the first thing that customers are going to see when they visit your store and when you first register you're obviously going to have a zero feedback score so you need to make sure that you get it to at least 50 or at least 100 and there's various different ways that that you can boost your feedback score when you first sign up. One of the easiest ways is to buy things because the same feedback score that you get as a buyer counts towards the same feedback score as a seller. So you can either buy cheap items that are less than one pound or one dollar or what you could do is that you could buy digital items that don't necessarily need to be sent out. But either way, you need to increase your feedback score to at least 50 or 100 using any one of these two methods. The next thing that you need to be focused on doing is increasing your selling limit. So for anyone out there that's not aware, all sellers on eBay are given a limit that restricts them from listing more than their limit allows them to. And eBay puts this in place because they don't want people coming onto the platform as a brand new seller and selling a bunch of rubbish. They wanna make sure that they monitor and increase your selling limit as soon as you've proved to them that you're a trusted seller and this is something that you need to actively be doing every single month so you can either request a limit increase through your ebay account or what you could do is that you can call them and do it over the phone now in terms of my recommended limit that you should try and get to i haven't really got a number it all depends on what you're planning on doing with your store how much you want to list for example if you have plans of selling around twenty thousand pounds or twenty thousand dollars worth of product through your store every single month then maybe you can increase your monthly limit to around forty thousand or maybe fifty thousand dollars just to give you extra room to work with but either way 
it's important for you to know that increasing your limit is one of the most important things that you could do as a brand new eBay seller. The next key thing that you need to do as a brand new seller is to find a winning product. And I've broken down exactly what a winning product is to me and what I look at in terms of my criteria over the years when it comes to finding a winning product. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that it's evergreen. All this means is that it's not seasonal and that you're gonna be able to sell it throughout the entire year. And the next thing that you need to be looking at is whether or not people are gonna come back to buy it again and again. So for me personally, when I'm building my e-commerce businesses, I like to make sure that customers are gonna come back and buy the item again and again and again. This allows me to know that I'm gonna be able to build a long-term business. I'm not just relying on one-off items that customers are gonna buy once and then never come back ever again. Simple examples of this is light bulbs, batteries, supplements. Once the customer has finished using the item, they're gonna to need to come back and buy another one. And if you build the foundations of your business with products that have repeat purchase value, then you're gonna be able to have a long-term business the next thing is that it's lightweight and small size. So I like to make sure that the items that I'm selling fit in a large letter size box like this. So if you're able to find an item that fits into this size box and it also has a decent value from between $15 to around $80, then you're gonna be able to make a decent amount of profit because the postage cost for me to ship this out to my customer is not gonna be that much. And I'm also gonna save money when it comes to me buying it for my supplier. So if you can find items that fit into this size box, you're gonna be able to increase your profit margin and ultimately make more profit at the end of the month. Another thing that you want to be looking at is whether or not the product has a 50% return on investment. So a basic example of this is if you invest $1,000 in stock, you want to get back $500 in profit. So for me personally, I like to aim for this percentage. Sometimes it's a little bit lower, sometimes a little bit higher, but as long as it's around the 50% return on investment mark, I know that I've got a decent amount of profit margin to work with when it comes to running ads and stuff like that. The next thing that you want to look out for is whether or not you've got a competitive edge. So this could be you having a little bit more knowledge about the product than the average person like for example I know that women's makeup sells really well and I know that people like Rihanna have become billionaires from selling makeup and things for women and stuff like that but just because she's become a billionaire from selling that and I know that it sells well doesn't mean that I'm gonna be successful because I don't really know about makeup like that so even if I try to sell it it's not gonna work out too well so try and find a product that you know a little bit more about than the average person because when it now comes to you marketing the product you're gonna be able to do a slightly better job than your competition and finally you want to make sure that the product has a low defect rate so this is quite simple you just want to make sure that the product isn't going to be subjected to a high refund rate, products that are highly electrical, products that require people to try and fix it themselves, you know, put it together. Items like that are going to be subjected to high refund rates. So try and think about this when it comes to you trying to find the best product to sell. So if you want to have the best chance of being successful when it comes to finding a winning product, you should be using a product research software. So there's two different softwares that you can use. You can either use Terrapeak or you can use Zeek Analytics. Now Terrapeak is free when it comes to you having an eBay selling account you're going to be able to access it by going to the research tab at the top right here and then clicking on Terrapeak product research and this is what it looks like so I've already typed in Bluetooth speaker and I'm just going to show you the key bits of information that you can look out for so it shows you the sell-through rate so it's not showing it to me right now but right here you're going to be able to see the sell-through rate you're going to be able to see the total amount of sellers and it also shows you which Bluetooth speaker is performing the best and how much money that seller made from that particular Bluetooth speaker in that period of time. Now, when it comes to using Zeek Analytics to do your product research, you're gonna have to pay for it every single month or every single year, depending on which plan you go with. But there's a few differences that you need to be aware of between Zeek Analytics and Terrapeak. Like for example, you're gonna be able to do competitive research on Zeek Analytics where it's gonna show you how much money your biggest competitor has made in the last 30 days. And the reason why this data is useful is because you're gonna be able to see a lot of useful information that's gonna help you make decisions on what products you should be selling within your own category. They also have something called Title Builder where you're gonna be able to see exactly what keywords you should be using within your title, within your description, within your item specifics, which is gonna help you rank higher in the eBay search results. In addition to that, they've also got something called Zeek Pro where they give you 500 best selling eBay items. So let me just click on that and show you. So if you're confused on what products you should be selling, they give you 500 best selling items that are performing well right now and you're able to change it from the category so you can change it right here depending on what eBay website you want to sell on, whether you want to sell on eBay UK, eBay Germany, eBay US, you're going to be able to filter it and see the 500 best performing items right now. So if you're still confused about which one do you need, do you need Terrapeak or do you need Zeek Analytics? It all depends on how much research you want to do when it comes to finding the best product to sell. In my opinion, I believe that it's good to use both because you're going to be able to get different aspects that's going to help you make the best decision possible. So if you do want to sign up for a seven day trial with Zeek Analytics, you can click the link in my description down below and that way you're going to be able to go through it, you know, get an idea of how it can benefit you and you can go through all of the tools that they have available to help you build your eBay business. So those are the main stages that you need to be aware of as a brand new seller before you start building your eBay account. But if you want a more in-depth 
understanding of everything you need to know when it comes to selling on eBay as a beginner, then you can check out www.projectebay.com, which is my step-by-step -step guide that's taken me around two years to build. I'm always adding new lectures to it and I'm always updating things to help out my students. So you can check that out by clicking the first link in the description down below. But if you rather watch a video where I break down step-by-step -step what you need to do when it comes to finding the best supplier to use, then you can click right there. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.